A warm greeting. Today is Saturday, April 20, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. In today's video, I would like to discuss temperature anomalies in the tropical Atlantic as well as the equatorial region of the Pacific. In summary, we'll be talking about the evolution of the El Niño phenomenon and the changes we're seeing in the main cyclonic development region related to the warm temperatures in the tropical Atlantic. We'll also discuss the possible development of El Niño Atlantic, which could lead to a more active Cape Verde season than usual and pose greater risks to the Caribbean region. In the following animation, where we can see surface ocean temperature anomalies, we see that in the Pacific region, the El Niño phenomenon continues to weaken. Gradually, we see blue colors representing cooler temperatures approaching the surface in the equatorial region of the eastern Pacific. Most likely, during the peak of the hurricane season in the Atlantic, the La Niña phenomenon will be developing. If we look at the latest update of temperature anomalies below the surface, we can still see an area of cooler temperatures than usual, which has been gradually moving towards the surface over the last month. Eventually, when this water reaches the surface in the equatorial region of the Pacific, we will have neutral ENSO conditions and then the imminent development of the La Niña phenomenon. El Niño has weakened so much in the Pacific region that the Australian Meteorological Agency already indicates that the El Niño phenomenon is not present. However, according to NOAA parameters, we still continue under the influence of El Niño, although the latest forecasts suggest that between April and May, we may be in neutral conditions. The latest model projections continue to forecast the La Niña phenomenon for the peak of the season, for August, September, and October. Remember that the La Niña phenomenon in the Pacific reduces wind shear in the Atlantic, thus promoting cyclonic activity. This projection of La Niña development for the peak of the season, along with the warm temperatures prevailing in the tropical Atlantic, is the reason why the vast majority of meteorological prediction groups continue to forecast that the 2024 hurricane season will be hyperactive and close to the historical record. It's very important that residents of the United States, Mexico, Central America, and the Caribbean are prepared, as the hurricane season is less than two months away. Something I wanted to mention is that in the new ENSO evolution projections, we've seen that now it's forecasted that La Nina will be moderate or weak for the peak of the season. When compared to the projections from the beginning of the year, a moderate or strong La Nina was forecasted. So now it seems that we'll have a weak or moderate La Nina phenomenon. However, this doesn't change the projections of an active season because historically, we've seen that in years with weak, moderate, or strong La Nina, cyclonic activity is much higher than usual. In fact, historically, even in neutral years, cyclonic activity in the Atlantic is extremely high, and statistically, there's no difference in terms of cyclonic activity that we can anticipate if we have neutral ENSO conditions, weak, or moderate La Nina. The important thing is that most models continue to project the La Nina phenomenon for the months of August, September, October, and November. Now I wanted to talk a little about the anomalies that continue in the tropical Atlantic region, which, as you know, are at record levels for this time of year. However, in recent weeks, we've seen that the waters in this region have cooled somewhat, as shown in this image, where changes in ocean surface temperatures over the last 14 days are projected. You can definitely see that the subtropical and tropical regions of the Atlantic have seen cooling in recent weeks, and this corresponds to the fact that we've had a stronger than usual Azores high system. This, in turn, favors the trade winds, which usually have a cooling effect on the waters in this region. I wanted to point out that in the Gulf of Guinea region or in the equatorial region of the Atlantic Ocean, we've seen that the waters have warmed. So it's more likely that the Atlantic El Niño phenomenon will develop for the peak of the season, and later we'll talk about what implications this could have for the Caribbean region. And although over the past two weeks, the waters have cooled somewhat in the tropical and subtropical regions of the Atlantic, we still have temperatures at record levels, and there's still a marine heat wave, so temperatures are still at record levels for this time of year. But at least the good news is that over the past two weeks, we haven't seen any extraordinary warming. And in fact, in the main cyclonic development region, which extends from the Caribbean to the African region, temperatures are now close to what we saw in 2010, although remember that 2010 was a very active year in the Atlantic. The temperatures in the ocean surface in the main cyclonic development region still remain warmer than what we've seen in the last 40 years. It's projected that the high pressure will weaken again slightly over the next few weeks, which would reduce the trade winds during the coming weeks, and it's very likely that these temperatures will increase again rapidly there's still a high probability that the year 2024 will be one of the warmest years in the main cyclonic development zone for the months of August, September, and October. I also wanted to mention that regardless of the cooling we've seen in recent weeks, remember that this graph only shows surface temperatures. However, temperatures are very warm at ocean depths, as we can see in this graph, 
where we're currently at a historically and surprisingly record level in terms of heat content in the ocean in the main development region. And that means that it's very likely that the main cyclonic development zone will see water warming again over the next few weeks. Now, if we've seen a trend in the new projections that for the peak of the season, it's likely that temperature anomaly levels will decrease, but still, the models continue to project that it will be among the top three years in terms of ocean surface temperatures that we've seen on record. And although it would definitely be good news if the anomalies were to diminish somewhat, the Atlantic is already so warm that there's no longer time for it to cool efficiently enough to have an effect on reducing cyclonic activity. And this, combined with La Nina and the Pacific, continues to suggest a very active and dangerous season for the North Atlantic. I'll be recording another video in the coming days to see the latest projections from different models so you can see the changes they suggest in terms of temperature anomaly patterns in the Atlantic for the months of August, September, and October. The last factor I wanted to discuss is the equatorial region of the Atlantic, where temperatures also remain very warm, and we've seen a trend in the models now showing that it's possible that the Atlantic El Niño phenomenon will develop during the months of August and September. In other words, they're projecting warmer temperatures in the Gulf of Guinea region. This is something we'll be closely monitoring because historically, when we have the Atlantic El Niño phenomenon, this results in more active Cape Verde cyclonic activity than usual. That is, it favors the formation of tropical waves and increases relative vorticity, which helps these tropical waves to strengthen. Unfortunately, the Atlantic El Niño phenomenon usually results in higher Cape Verde cyclonic activity, which could put the Caribbean at greater risk and increase the expectation of intense hurricanes forming during this hurricane season. One of the aggravating factors is that La Niña and the Pacific favors cyclonic activity in the Caribbean. If we have the Atlantic El Niño, it would favor cyclonic activity in the Cape Verde region, and basically, the combination of these two phenomena can create very favorable conditions throughout the tropical Atlantic basin and put us at greater risk. This will be something I'll be monitoring closely in the coming weeks and months. Stay tuned to Hurricane Info. The next video I'll record will be discussing changes in global model projections, and we'll also record another video discussing what we can expect in terms of cyclonic activity in the Pacific East region, as the hurricane season officially begins on May 15th for this area. And it's important that our followers from Western Mexico are also informed during this hurricane season. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking on the red button below the video that says subscribe. Until then, have a great weekend, and I'll see you later.